to the next segment, economic development. Panelists, are you ready? We we'll solicit questions on economic development. I have one question here from the audience and I would ask this to everyone. Do you support sports? about SPLOS and how that SPLOS tax, it grows the city. But when I was sitting in the meeting, I was sitting there thinking about, okay, because she was talking about the city is moving, the city is growing. And I was thinking about, well, how can I take what she said and relate it to education? And here's the idea that I came up with, is that th this city is moving, it is growing. But the question that I had to come up with is this, now that this city is moving, it's growing, it's on the rise, but if we have a 47% dropout rate, and this is how I related it back to education, we have a 47% dropout rate in the black community, then our kids will not be in a position to get those jobs that the SPLOS tax is gonna bring here to Van Austin because they won't have a high school education or they're dropping out to 416, so they will not be educationally prepared for this growth that the SPLOS tax is bringing in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Yost? Sure. 100% for SPLOS. There is, uh, there are many people, when I stop and talk with them about why they should vote for SPLOS, or I allow them to tell me why they're not voting for SPLOS, um, they are either misinformed, or have information that isn't really up to date. Um, I, I can tell you why I'm 100% for SPLOS. We're gonna spend $55 million in the next two years to fix uh, or to build a new wastewater treatment plant that has to be done, we don't have a choice, and to build uh, a force main. And the force main will start Part of it will start in my district, District 6, that has had the flooding on Park Lane and Meadowbrook, uh, sewage overflows <coughs> on, on those streets in particular, but also in other areas of the city. And the, the SPLOS has designated $55 million to fix those two problems, a new wastewater treatment plant and a new forest main that will not be gravity flow 
which is what we have now, but we'll force the sewage out to the brand new treatment plant. We've got to have it. We need it. We need it for my district. We need it for citizens. Uh, we need it for the city to grow. Uh, and it's important that you understand there isn't wasted tax dollars. There aren't wasted dollars in SPLOS. We could sit here and talk about it every day for a year, and we do not waste your tax dollars that you vote on on each and every one of those projects that are on the SPLOS list. Thank you. <coughs> I think you're first to say something. Please come up. I think you've got a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> no government waste. Do you believe that? Are you certain? Uh, I can tell you the number the amount of waste I see in the public works department. We haven't invested in technology to reduce it. There are no employee incentive plans to reduce waste. We burn fuel like crazy. Sometimes these guys are burning from lunchtime, break time. <coughs> Uh, the only reason I don't burn it on my particular vehicle is because it doesn't have air conditioning. I have to get out of the thing because it's so hot and noisy. Uh, we need to get more efficient, efficient on the routes. Uh, and most important is what it does to the consumer. Higher taxes. It lowers their purchasing power. And they'll just shop elsewhere. That is the most important thing you need to remember about supplies. We've been doing the same thing for the last five or six years. Revenues have been going down. We're just going to leave it the same. Expect a better result. There are a lot of national issues that are going to be coming around in the next year or two. People are going to have less money because it's going to be going up to a federal agency now. Or they're going to be required to spend it somewhere else. Maybe not in our communities. We expect to keep drawing consumers in, and we have to lower the taxes. We have to lower them to the point where it's beneficial that they come here and shop and create jobs for us. It's not the account, it's the behavior. Now there is a certain point where lowering taxes won't get you, won't get you any higher revenues, but we haven't reached that point yet. We need to see about privatizing a lot of the city businesses services. And then once you service where you have a competition there, garbage, now that's a monopoly. Water, that's a monopoly. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyone care to respond to candidates for city council? Any comments? Slogan. One thing I like us to look at is a uh, you know, if you ever travel to Florida, I mean, in a, in a couple minutes, you're going to hit a toll. You know? So, I mean, regardless, that's not going to stop me from going to Walt Disney World. It's not going to stop me from going shopping anywhere else in Florida. My thing is this. I think we, we need to look at the fact that it can help stimulate our city. It can help stimulate our economy. Because it would help stimulate small businesses. I'd rather a small business grow than a big business come and take business away from the small businesses because they have direct relationships with the citizens of our Dawson. So I think we look at it that way. And another thing too, let's look at it as if, hey, let's look at some other cities. How did it affect them? What did they do? Did small businesses grow or did it not? From the places that I've been looking at, especially places in Florida, businesses thrive. I mean, you got um, Walt Disney World, we have a lot of adventures. You know, we can grow that, you know, <coughs> from, from, from the bottom to the top. And we have to start somewhere, and it starts with us. And that's why I support Splash. Because I'm also a small business owner myself. And I see that, hey, it would help stimulate the transportation uh, area, it would help stimulate other businesses, and it would bring new businesses here as well. And that will also bring more business. Thank you. Mr. Miller. I voted last Monday, and um, I voted for SPLOS. I, um, I, I like to think about what would happen if the SPLOS doesn't pass. Um, I feel like um, 
these projects are going to have to be paid for one way or the other. And if the SPLOS doesn't, doesn't pass, I think our property taxes will be taken to the maximum first. And I don't believe that'll be enough to pay for the projects that have to be done. Um, so then we'll have a most tax, which will expire in three years, and then there will be another project that comes along, and you'll have to have another most tax. So we're going to get that penny tax one way or another, plus we're going to get the increase in property taxes. Um, I think the SPLOS tax is the fairest tax, and, um, and I would prefer that my property taxes didn't go up. Another thing that you have to consider is, um, I, I know the SPLOS is important to Val Austin, it's important to Lambs County, it's also important to the smaller cities that don't have the revenue coming in, um, that need fire trucks, um, employees, policemen, um, sanitary workers, um, just all, all kind of um, uh, equipment that has to be provided for the citizens of that city um, to have decent services. And um, a lot of that's paid for by the SPLOS. The cities have to come up with a list of what the SPLOS money is going to be spent on, and it will be spent on those projects. Um, I believe that's the fairest way for it to go about. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Ms. Tooley? Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? Let's move into the final. 